See, when I was a kid, I grew up, I was one of those people who thought I was a boy living in a girl's body. I thought that somewhere in the mix of God making me that he had made a mistake and that somehow I had to live with this curse of me having to be a girl. My mom would dress me up at church, dress me up on Sundays in a pretty dress and, uh, and, and curl my hair and I would stand in front of the mirror and I would just cry because I hated it so much. I hated it so much. I would pray at night. I would pray and I would say, God, please make me a boy. Please make me a boy. Please make me a boy. Like I literally thought this was possible. And you know, I... In, in school, I thought I, would, I was mad because I thought I made a better boy than most of the boys out there. I mean, I was the starting forward. <laughs> I was the starting forward on the boys' soccer team. I was one of the first ones picked at recess for all the games. And you know what? I could, I could outboy any boy. I might not look like it now. I, I couldn't now. But, um, you know, in, um, so in, and, and, and I liked girls, too. From a very young age, I liked girls, and, 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 and I actually hated it because it, I went through major heartbreaks because I would have feelings for people that didn't make any sense. That no, I had feelings for people that would go nowhere. It's not even something you could act on. It was something that didn't make sense, that you were an outcast. And I had these feelings that you would just get broken hearts because there's no one that's ever going to feel the same way about you that you feel about them. You know, I grew up in church. I grew up, I have... Many people in my family that's in the ministry, my, my father helped found a Christian school. I grew up in church, but you know what? I, I, no one taught me about God. All I knew was religion. My mom taught me the word, but I didn't know anything about the power of God. I didn't know. You know, Pastor Rodney has taught us in Bible school, you know, that religion puts burdens on people that they won't even lift one finger to help them bear. And people in religion, they grow up in religion, and there's, there's no answers they grow up in religion and there's something wrong with you. There's, there's something wrong with you, but there's no one that can help you. And, the, and, and, you know, growing up in religion with this problem, you think, you almost seem like there's this God that's supposed to love me unconditionally. And he's really this great guy who's supposed to love me, but he really doesn't love who I think I am. He loves who religion says I should be. Right? But I don't even know how to be that person. So, like, you're just lost in the middle. I grew up hating the life I grew up. I tried to commit suicide many times. By the time I was in sixth grade, I, I drank bleach, I ate rat poison. I just, anything that I could do to get out of this world, I would eat the little things in the shoe boxes that say do not eat. And you know, um, by the time I was a teenager, I got into drugs and finally, long story short, God touched my life when I was 16 at a summer youth camp. Praise God for youth camp. And he, <laughs> I don't know what the guy preached, but all I know is I cried out and I said, God, just do something. God, just do something. I was so hungry for him to just do something. And he touched my heart and he filled me up with love, this love. And he put a smile on my face. And, and for the first time in my whole entire life, I'd ever felt loved. And you know what? I, that feeling was so awesome, but it only lasted like a week. I didn't know what I did to make God do that to me. I didn't know what I did. And so for about a week later, you know, the feeling died. It's a, it was all a feeling. I didn't know anything about God. And I, all I, and I didn't know that God could set me free from all my problems. I didn't know that the anointing destroys the yoke. And so about a week later, I just went right back. I was in a relationship with a, with a woman at this time. And it was actually someone who I very much liked, someone that I would have married. And, you know, so I went right back into that lifestyle because I didn't know, I, I'm not, I grew up with hypocrites, and I'm not going to be someone who says, okay, great, you know, I, I'm going to serve you, God, I love you, God, but still have all these problems, and so I didn't, I'm going to, I'm going to have to choose one or the other, I can't play both, and so I just went right back into the lifestyle, and so for four more, like, four more years, I ran from God, but I loved him the whole entire time, I loved him so much for that one touch, I loved him, and in my heart, I wanted him, but I didn't know that I could have him. I didn't know that it could be okay. I didn't know that he could set me free. So I ran for four years, and every time I would be in the middle of sin, I'd be in the middle of sin, and I'd feel the love of God. I'd feel his love, and all I could say was, God, I'm so sorry. Because I didn't know I could give my life to him, because I wasn't going to give my life to him and have these problems. And so finally, four years later, I got tired of that, and I was in my kitchen, and I I was ready to, I had a knife and I wanted to cut my, myself and kill myself again. And, but I looked down at the knife. I looked at it and I said, never again, never again. Because I knew God was better. I knew he was everything I ever searched for and everything I needed. I put down the knife and I said, never again, never again am I going to want to die. And I told, I told that 
to suicide. I never again am I not going to want to die. Am I going to want to die? Because that's all I thought my whole entire life. I'm talking from second grade. I wanted to leave this earth. All I thought about was death. Anyways, I, got say, I gave my life to God, and I went to this church where I met Brock. Like he said, we were engaged within two months. I mean, you know what? I broke it off because I still had this problem. I didn't have what it took to make this relationship work. I thought his mom was more attractive than him. I know that sucks, but it's true. I'm telling you, when I was a little girl, I didn't grow up and want to marry Prince Charming. I, when I was a little girl and I saw the stories like Cinderella and I saw that prince fighting that dragon and he got out the sword and he killed him, I wanted to do that. I wanted to fight the dragon. I wanted to marry the princess. I didn't want to marry the prince. I didn't want a boy. I didn't want a prince to come rescue me. I wanted to rescue people. When I was a little girl and we would write papers in school, what we want to be when we grow up, I would write papers of how I wanted to grow up and I wanted to be a soldier and I wanted to rescue people and save people's lives. Not that I wanted to grow up and be a mom and a wife. So anyways, I broke off our engagement and we went to our, our pastor for counseling to help us. And he, I don't remember what he said. But afterwards, he pulled Brock aside and he actually told him, he said, Brock, he said, you might want to leave this girl alone. He said, because don't, people don't usually come out of this. And he told him to leave me alone. And praise God, he didn't. Because he'd heard from God that this is your wife. So anyways, two years later, we, one year later, we went to Bible school. And I came to Bible school and I learned. I grew up in church. I grew up in church. I have... Many uncles, I have uncles that are Southern Baptist preachers. My brother's a chaplain in the Navy. My dad was a principal and a founder of a Christian school. I grew up in church. But I came to Bible school, and that's where I learned that, the, that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, and that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I had to go to Bible school to learn this. I had to get a degree to learn that the devil is bad, Jesus is good. <laughs> but anyways, um, and I learned that in Bible school, and all they talked about in Bible school was hunger, and, and, and hunger, and hunger, and hunger, and hunger, and more hunger, and all they ever talked about was hungry, so much to where, if, I mean, and even when you thought you were hungry, they'd say, you're not hungry enough, you need to get more hungry. And it's just hunger, hunger, hunger. And, I was, and we, they taught us, they said, if there's anything you need from God, all you have to do is get hungry and go get it. Anyways, two years later, I married Brock out of faith. I told God, I said, God, I'm going to marry him, fine. I tried to push him away, he wouldn't go away. I said, okay, God, I'll marry him. I said, <laughs> I said but I'll marry him out of faith. I married him out of faith. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, but all I know is he's my best friend and, and it'll be okay. I knew it was going to be okay. And so I married him and for three years, for three years, three years, it was a very hard relationship because I did not want to be intimate with him. I'm telling you, I hated being intimate with him. I hated it. And I don't know why anyone would even stick around with someone like that. I hated it. I'd be mad for like weeks. I didn't even want him to put his hand on my leg. And so three years after, I just like this light bulb went off. After going to Bible school and learning that God wants good things for us, that everything that is awesome comes from Jesus, and all these bad things, anything that's bad and hurts it's, and makes you suffer, that's the devil. And, and it's so that it's, it, it's not obviously God's will for your life. So, and if it's not his will, it does not have to be there. And so I don't have to put up with it. I don't have to live with it. I do not have to put up with it. I do not just have to say, well, that's my lot. It, it can be perfect. It can be, can be heaven. Our lives can be a little taste of heaven here on this earth. Why should we accept the suffering? 
I want it. And I told God, uh, one, three years after being married, I, like this light bulb went off in my head, and I said, God, this is not right. I said, God, this is not right. I said, God, I'm not going to be some 80-year-old couple, and I'm doing gardening, and I'm still struggling with the same problem. I said, God, there's not, it's not fair that he loves this relationship more than I do. It is not fair that he loves me and he gets more out of this relationship than I get. Because this relationship just isn't just a gift for him. It's a gift for me. And it's not very much of a gift right now. I said, God, you've got to set me free. You've got to set me free. You've got to set me free. I said, God, if you don't set me free, something else is going to happen. You either set me free or something else is going to happen. And I just started pressing in because they told us in Bible school, they said, when you get hungry, just, he, Richard Moore, he would say, this is what like, hunger is. And he said, you, picture someone putting your head underwater and they're, you're underwater and they're holding you underwater and you can't breathe. And the only thing in the world you're thinking right then is I need air. I need air. You're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about your problems. You're not thinking about your grocery list. You're not thinking about even why does this guy not like me? All you think is I need air or I will die. And he said, when you get that hungry for God, God will move. And we were taught about the woman with the issue of blood. How today was how she suffered for 12 years, many things and many physicians and was rather, was worse. And when she heard that Jesus was coming, she said in herself, if I may touch him by his clothes, I shall be made whole. And she said, today is my day. She suffered for many years. And so anyways, I, like that woman, I started pressing in. I started pressing in and I said, God, you got to set me free. Every service I was in, I was like, God, you got to set me free. You got to set me free. You got to set me free, Lord. You got to set me free. And about a year later, while Brock and I were being intimate, the power of God came in the room. And it was the most wonderful, beautiful thing I'd ever experienced in my whole entire life. And afterward, I went into my bathroom and I sat on the floor and I cried and I laughed for over an hour because it was the most wonderful thing I'd ever experienced. I didn't even know it could be that great. It was the most awesome thing I'd ever experienced. And for the next three months, I was, it was like, I was like a teenager, like madly, deeply in love, like a cheerleader would be for the football player. I'm talking, I had a crush on my husband. God God set me totally free. God set me totally free. Totally free. Totally free. And you know what? I I some I am just now I'm I've become such a girl. It's not even funny. I'm telling you. I was tell just a couple years ago, you know, <laughs> just a couple years ago I was in 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 church and I just was we were singing the dance with me all over in my soul and I just Like, I was just felt like I was dancing. I'm talking like a Disney princess in a ball. It's like, and I went, I told my my friend, I said, I felt felt like a princess. And as it's coming out of my mouth, that's like the stupidest thing on the planet that I would have ever said in my life. I would never have said I felt like a princess. But I did, and Jesus totally made me feel like a princess. And I am so different. God is so awesome. God is so awesome. And you know what? I would not be this way if it wasn't for my husband. And God, of course. Sticking with me and loving me. (laughs) Come up here. Bring the girls. Bring the girls. Look at this wonderful family. Come stand over here. 